The decade-long search for a new fighter jet to replace aging CF-18s has come full circle. The Liberal government has announced negotiations with U.S. defense giant Lockheed Martin to purchase 88 F-35s. But it's still not clear how much the aircraft will cost or when delivery is expected. The move into final negotiations for the F-35 has also prompted questions about whether Ottawa should have pressed ahead with its original deal for them more than a decade ago. In a recent op-ed to the National Post, one expert says the entire process has demonstrated shortcomings with defence procurement in Canada. Richard Shimuka, senior fellow at the Macdonald Laurier Institute, says one of the main lessons from the F-35 selection process is that political considerations trumped expertise. Well, he joins us now to tell us more about this. Sir, welcome back to Forum Daily. Thanks for having me. So 10 years ago, we were looking at these F-35 jets, and now we're right back where we started. Mr. Shamuka, walk us through the history of this procurement process. So the F-35 project is a little bit more complex than most other defense procurements, because back in the early 2000s, we joined what was called the Joint Strike Fighter Partnership Program, which was an industrial coalition of countries that were basically going to produce, construct and produce the fighter as it went through in the future. And so that didn't actually necessitate us to actually pre- to acquire the F-35 at that time. But what it did was allow Canadian companies the opportunity to actually produce components that would go on to every single F-35 built. So that occurred in 2006 when we signed an MOU with the United States. And then for the next couple of years after that, the Department of National Defense and uh, other parts of the Canadian government assessed what were the potential options. And then they selected the F-35 in 2010 under the uh, conservative government at the time. This was a sole source selection. What was found was that this aircraft was basically significantly less costly, much more capable, and provided better industrial benefits than any other potential option at the time. And therefore, they just advanced it as a sole source acquisition. About two years later, there was a lot of political rancor and and sort of controversy that had emerged. And then so the conservative government at that time basically uh, put a pause on it. They tried a reset where they would actually reassess the procurement. Uh, And then two years from that reset, they actually decided again to acquire the F-35. But what happened was that in the United States, there was a premature release of information. And then the conservative government facing an election in the coming year decided to just put that on hold. As we know, they lost that election. And then you had the liberal government of Justin Trudeau, they came to power and who had actually said that he was not going to buy the F-35 under any circumstances. Uh, Basically, they realized that wasn't actually a tenable way, so they kind of concocted a potential capability gap where they would acquire a small number of Super Hornets, which was probably the most viable competitor to the F-35. After that point, uh, that that deal fell through itself, uh, in part because of a trade dispute between Bombardier and uh, and Boeing, who manufactured the F-35. And so then they bought some uh, surplus uh, Australian Hornets, which is basically their version of the CF-18 is what we currently fly. They were getting rid of them because they were buying F-35s. And then you had the competition that took basically about four, four years or so. And then yesterday was basically the announcement, the final announcement from that competition that we were actually going to again buy the F-35. Quite a long process there. Now, uh, you're saying that there are some lessons that we can learn from this process. So what are some main lessons that policymakers can take away from this F-35 procurement process? Just about a minute left, sir. I think the easiest one is to look at subject matter experts. If you look at what Department of National Defense was saying in 2010, they were clearly stating this aircraft was less costly, you know, more capable, better industrial benefits. And they were basically on the nose with a lot of their assessments. Uh, and th- all everything that's happened since has basically been a lot of political kind of debate that was not really centered on what was actually being said by the bureaucracy. And if for politicians, I think it's really helpful to think about that because it's easy enough to twist issues or twist narratives or whatever to suit political purposes. But frankly, we are less, we're much poorer off in terms of you know, the money that we spent wasted over the last 10, uh, 10 years on this. And also we just have, we have an obsolescent fighter capability that we're kind of 
trying to make work for far past what it was, uh, its due date was. Mm -hmm. Some good food for thought there, sir. Thank you again for joining us today on Forum Daily and sharing with us. Thanks for having me. More news to come after the break, but first we take a look at the federal government's child care rebate program. We'll have an interview with the CEO of the Canadian Child Care Federation up next, now that Ontario has signed on to Ottawa's child care plan. Stay with us.